A change has come over the Chamber of Dreamers. The hideous forms of the Coven are solid now, and whispers fill the room. Hundreds of whispers, resolving themselves slowly into a single voice, which prickles like a swarm of ants inside your skull. Speak. You are the slumbering Coven, the ones who have slept beneath Rashomon. Yes. The slayers of my father, the warden of my mother, and the ones who punished her never to sleep, never to dream. Yes. Why? She did not attack you. She did not... She broke our law, Spawn. The one you travel with, he is the product of such broken laws as are you. Transgressions must be punished, or they are repeated. I agree. And that is why we are here to punish you. No. Not unless you want this place to unravel around you, to see all dreams, all the chambers of this city flooded and gone. To do so would kill you as well, and much farther do we think you have to travel. My father. What happened to him? Dead and gone by our law. As her mother gave in to her appetites, so was she forced to devour her own mate. In the manner of all hags, piece by piece, leaving just enough alive to scream. By your law, you say? Then all I wish is that the same justice be brought upon you, and that you feel its self-same mercy. You have questions, Spirit Eater? Ask them. By weaving together the strands of our dreams. The longer we sleep, the stronger our web. And we take dreams from other minds, adding them to our own. From the dreams of mortals, we salvage much. Visions and hopes and memories. We take these things and gather them here before mortal minds can forget them. Yes. Mortals are stupid, forgetful things. We walk in their dreams, and we take what they will only lose. We showed you nothing. You showed us, and we drank deep. Such was the price of your passage, and of the words we speak to you now. From its deepest places, yes. Where dreams mingle with hidden and forgotten things. Yes, you are a tempest of dreams. A whirling storm, devouring dreams and dreamers alike. They swirl around you like leaves, tearing, shifting, blending one into another. It is maddening. We saw you reach out to devour the bear god, and sensed in your hunger the death of all dreams. But such as you walks the land, all that we try to preserve is lost. Yes, the white twin and the red. The white twin was Lyanna, the red twin was Nephris. The pretty one, her dreams are scattered. Nauseating to look upon, she knows not what she is. But yes, the one she calls Mother beseeched our vice and offered her dreams for trade. They were sisters of a sort, and they were more than two. They sought to end your affliction, your hunger, to spare you from this suffering. The whispers seem to draw back from your mind, separating themselves into many different voices. For a few moments, they echo back and forth across the chamber, as if conspiring amongst themselves. Then, abruptly, they resolve again into one. We are creatures of dreams, not words. Telling is cumbersome. We will show you what you wish to know. Out of thin air step two women, 
one garbed in white, the other in red. You realize at once that you are seeing a dream, a memory, something that occurred here in the past. See us, hags of the coven, and know us for what we are. We beseech your wisdom and bear gifts of dreams to trade. Dreams of a sort even you have never seen. We have heard tales of you in the dreams of the living and reflected in the dying minds of those who perished in our sanctum. Your dreams are a treasure, unique in our hoard, like worlds seen through different facets of the same ancient stone. Your question resounds across the infinity of your dreams, but in this place, you must ask it aloud. Speak. We... we would know how to end the affliction. The curse that the Rashemi call the Spirit Eater. We have searched so long, Sisters of the Coven. We... Tell us how to end the hunger. How can the Eater of Souls be granted peace? Even in the dream, the whispering of the hags seems to pause, growing quiet for a long moment, as if in reverence or uncertainty. Then... That affliction is a punishment, meted out by one who once reigned as God of the Dead. He alone knows its beginnings, and he alone might bring about its end. You speak of Merkel, but, but he is dead. We seek an answer, not a riddle. That God of the Dead has passed beyond thought or dream. He has been slain and his throne usurped. His knowledge is lost. Not lost. Merkel is a corpse, but his thoughts and dreams remain. Maroon now inside the rotting hulk of his mind. He dreams endlessly of old enemies come to grief and ancient slights avenged. As long as he is remembered and feared by mortals, even if they are pitiful and few, his dreaming will persist, and his mind shall endure. Then we must speak to a dead god? It can be done. That is all we would know, Sisters of the Coven. Thank you. Then this curse is the result of one of your gods? How many gods of the dead do you people have? Your people? The gods of the dead watch you, Gan of Dreams. All their laws, all their punishments will fall on you as well. And if you do not believe in them, then one of their harshest laws shall be inflicted upon you. To lie within the wall of the faithless until you dissolve as a fading dream. So keep your defiance if you must. But it will not last when death comes for you, Dream Thing. That is a question we cannot answer. The Red Twin has returned to Thay to her academy. A horror of endless voids and fractured souls. We are blind to all that passes there. The White Twin, Vienna, kept portals in her secret room, in the shadow of her theater. One of them is open only to those who know where it leads. Beg passage from her keeper of doors, and he will open the way. Beyond that portal lies the Academy, and your answers. But we care not what you do, Spirit Eater. We have spoken enough. You have troubled our dream too long. Speak then, Spirit Eater, but do not expect us to receive you ever again. We see them in your mind's eye, but their dreams, if they live, are far beyond our grasp. The wilds of the Witch Realm, the merchant kingdoms to the west and they to the south, in these places our dreams wander free, and our eyes rove even farther. Not that far. Not yet. Still, 
We sense one of them. He is close, but he is shattered, ruined, severed. His dreams come only in flashes, and they are strangely hidden from our sight. No, another. The one you call Bishop is dead, dissolving in the wall. Or do you not believe your dreams? Sword and shard are tied to you, and to the others who have also borne the blade. The sword of Gith is not separated so easily from its wielder's hand. The shard of Gith? What are they speaking about? Shard and sword have been rejoined, reunited with all their pieces. The blade was taken from you for this purpose, and it awaits you, reforged, in a hidden sanctum now besieged. Other masks, yes. Many masks. We walked in their dreams, just as we have walked in yours. Their faces were as varied as the mortals who infest the witch realm. Some prettier than yours. Oh, yes. And some fouler. All ended the same. In hunger, starving, ravenous. Thoughts, minds, dreams, all drained away and forever lost. You are utterly unlike us, Spirit Eater. We hoard, collect, preserve. To us, dreams are things to be treasured. Torn from those who do not know their worth. But you devour and destroy, leaving nothing in your wake. I say we bring their dreaming to an end. Show them the pain of the waking world. If you end our dream, all that it contains is lost. Imagine. The dreams of a thousand, thousand souls. The knowledge of wizards and kings, centuries dead. The hopes and loves of men and women and beasts. All contained within our unending dream. Such a trove as has never been assembled. Here or anywhere across the plains. This you would destroy for your own selfish whim? So be it. My spirits are ready to fight with us, to their second deaths if need be. You have not the power nor the will, stupid, arrogant thing. How many hundreds have tried to usurp our place, but we took their power and absorbed their dreams. This one does not stand alone, but with me. I am no novice to the unraveling of the dreams and ambitions of others. Together, you will not find us easy prey. Gan begins to mumble a series of words. You do not understand what they mean, if indeed they mean anything at all. But you close your eyes and concentrate on them, focusing your mind and allowing Gan to guide you. Together you reach out, probing, drifting with the ebb and flow of the dream. The dreamscape is like a vast tapestry upon which the hags crawl, greedily snatching up dream fragments from weaker mortals and sewing them into their vast, sprawling web. Gan guides you to the seams, the weakest, most ancient connections that bind the dream together. And together, you tear them asunder, watching as the tapestry splits apart. And the hags shriek in agony as their dream dissolves into a million whirling threads. Ah,
We've got company over here. 